Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm Azalda, I'm a knitwear designer based in Edinburgh, Scotland. If you're watching this when it goes up in real time, happy winter solstice to you. If you live at such a high latitude as we do, or much higher, I'm sure you will join me in feeling kind of relieved that we are at the turning point of the winter and days are gonna start very slowly, getting a little bit longer, but it is a good time of year to celebrate the light that we do have and uh, in literal and of course metaphorical ways and to celebrate I wanted to release a pattern that is a gift for you that is completely free. This is the Lichtbeanie, L-I-C-H-T, which is the Scots word for light, which seemed very appropriate for a solstice gift pattern. And it features a motif, I'm going to turn my head a little bit because on the sides, I mean you can wear it turned whichever way you want, but on the sides there is a sort of tree motif, um, and then on the front there's like little baby trees, or you could also, these could also be flames potentially, I don't know if that's taking the light concept too far, um, but I really like this motif. I'll show you on my overhead camera as well, I've got a second one here that's worked out of um, these kind of raised surface stitches. I'm not 100% sure what to call this kind of category of stitches. They're worked in a similar way to the dip stitches on the double dip stitches on my crown shy beanie pattern, which came out a couple of months ago as part of the Knitworthy 7 collection. You might have tried that. They're similar but not identical. I've seen them on a few um, designs by other people recently. And yeah, I'm not 100% sure what we should be calling these. Um, I've seen them used in small ways in a lot of Japanese stitch dictionaries as part of sort of cable patterns or lace patterns, um, but as a sort of overall category, I don't know, surface stitches kind of works. Um, dip stitches are a whole category of stitch patterns, but these aren't all dip stitches because as you'll see, um, we're not actually dipping down into rows below, at least for most of these stitches. So that's not quite appropriate. If you have an opinion on what we should call this category of stitches, because I think they're really interesting and I think in 2024, this is my uh, very tiny trend report prediction, I think we're going to see more designers using stitches like this and more patterns using them because they are fun to work and there's lo loads of potential there and I know I have some ideas. So I think we're going to see more of them if you have ideas of what we should call them or if you've um, seen them already referred to as something. There, For all I know there is a whole book about these that I just haven't found yet because I don't know what search term to use. So let me know down in the comments if you are calling these something, if you've tried them before, if you haven't. Um, this is a great place to start. You will need Super Chunky yarn. This is Retreat Super Chunky from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's like a roving style yarn. It's a single ply. It's lovely and squishy. And one of my favorite things about this yarn is that it comes in these massive 200 gram balls. And one of these is more than enough for a hat, even with a pom-pom. Without pom-poms, or if you're making little kid toddler sizes, then you could make two hats. Um, yeah, it's got great yardage. And this is a really tricky yarn category for substitutions in terms of once you get above kind of iron weight, there's sort of no rules. Um, so you want yarn, I would say that it has a recommended needle size of sort of 8 to 12 millimeters, even that is quite a big range. Um, this one has a recommended needle size of 10 millimeters, which is a US 15. That's about perfect. I actually used a 9 millimeter needle um, for the hat. Just, I felt like it needed a little bit more structure at my particular tension. Um, but that's a good range to look for. About a 10 millimeter needle is the suggested needle. Some yarns um, that are called super chunky, sometimes jumbo, are more like half an inch thick, an inch thick, and you would use more like 20 millimeter needles, really thick, almost broomstick like needles. So you don't want that. You want something that you can knit on about a 10 millimeter needle. I know if you're an English speaker who doesn't already speak a language or a dialect, 
like Scots that uses those CH sounds, the words with them can be sort of intimidating, um, like loch. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Pronounce it how it works for you, but it should be licht. Um, it's kind of a fun word to say, so don't be afraid to give it a go. And as I said, this is a completely free pattern. It's my little thank you gift to you for following, for liking my work, for buying patterns over the past year. I wouldn't get to do this without you, so I really appreciate it. I will put um, links to the pattern down below. You'll be able to get it on Ravelry and on my website. Totally free. So let's get started on how to work the raised surface pattern, whatever we're calling them, the stitches that make the trees, make the little trees. Okay, let's get started on how to do them. Got a little swatch of one by one ribbing here, and our first pattern row or round, we're going to knit everything except the stitches that will become the center stitches, the trunks of these trees. I'm going to slip those stitches. So I'm going to knit across to the middle of my swatch. The middle, I think it's the next one and then slip the next stitch. Throughout this pattern, you'll be slipping stitches purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work, and then knit across. I'm just gonna knit to the end of my swatch. On the actual hat, you'll be counting how many stitches to knit before your next slip stitch. For my swatch here, I'm gonna use my favorite method of swatching in the round. I like to call it swift swatching in the round. I do have a tutorial for that that I will link down below. If that's something that you're interested in. We're going to create these raised stitches that become the kind of branches of the tree. And to do that, we're going to work into one stitch with a lot more yarn than usual. So I'm knitting until I've got just one stitch left before that stitch I slipped. So this can be a good guide that you're in the right place. And before I work into that stitch, this one is gonna be a really big branch for the bottom of my tree. So we wanna add lots of extra yarn. I'm gonna do that by adding a yarn over that then I will drop off my needles on the next round. So I'm gonna yarn over, and then I'm going to work into that stitch, knit into it as normal, but without dropping it off my left needle. And to make sure you've got plenty of yarn in that stitch that's gonna be kind of extra big, you can give your right needle a little bit of a tug and just let lots of yarn into it. And then I'm going to do a yarn over again and knit into the same stitch. So we didn't drop it back off the left needle. It's still hanging out here. So I'm going to knit into it just as I normally would. And then I'm gonna drop it off the left needle. And again, because this is the bottom branch of our tree, I'm gonna do another yarn over. And again, I'm gonna drop that yarn over off on the next round. You'll see as we go through this swatch, as you go through the pattern, that the different size branches have different numbers of yarn overs next to them, just to kind of control how much yarn is in that stitch. And then on this round, our center stitch, I'm going to knit, and then I'm gonna repeat that setup again. So a yarn over, add some extra yarn, knit into the next stitch, but don't drop it off and sort of pull that stitch a bit looser than normal, do a yarn over that's in the center, and then knit into the same stitch again. Didn't catch it there. Again, pull that stitch up nice and loose, slip the original stitch off the needle, and then finish with another yarn over. And then I'm gonna to knit to the end of my swatch. You'll knit the number of stitches given in the pattern before your next motif. You can see here where I made these kind of extra big stitches, extra bulky stitches. They've got extra yarn in them. You can really see how bulky those are, how much extra yarn there is. And you can see if I spread it out, at the moment they've got these yarn overs on either side. On this round, we are gonna get rid of those extra yarn overs. We don't actually want holes, it's not a lacy pattern. They're just serving the purpose of adding some extra looseness so that we can manipulate those stitches on the following round. So now I'm going to knit across until I get to my first stitch that's not a normal knit stitch, so it will be a yarn over first. Okay, so here is my first yarn over. This one, you can kind of really tell that it's not part of this cluster. 
cluster is a good word for these stitches. So it's not part of this cluster coming out of a stitch, it's clearly between two stitches. So that means I'm going to slip it off the needle. Just slide it off. Because it's between two stitches, it's not coming out of a stitch, nothing's going to unravel, you don't need to worry. And then we're going to slip all three of these stitches in this little group. So again, slip as if to purl, the yarn stays at the back. And you can do them all as a group, you might find it easier to do them one by one, make sure you don't drop anything, the result is the same. And then we've got another yarn over, again this yarn over is clearly between two stitches, so that's going to slide off as well. This round I'm again knitting my centre stitch, and what I like to do here is snug things up a little bit. So we want extra yarn in the cluster stitch, but we don't want extra yarn hanging out behind it. So I'm kind of pulling that tight to kind of reduce how much yarn is between the two stitches on either side of the cluster. We'll do the same thing again. So here we've got our yarn over clearly between two stitches, slip it off. Slip the three stitches in the little cluster, two, three, slide that yarn over off, knit the next stitch, again give it a nice tug, and then knit the number of stitches given in the pattern. Or if you're following along with me, just knit to the end of your swatch. For this first set of branches, I'm going to work another knit row, slipping the cluster stitches before I do anything else. On the following rounds, you'll just do one sort of slipped row in between. But we want to give these bigger branches a bit of extra vertical space as well. Again, I'm going to knit until I get to my cluster stitches. I won't have the yarn overs on either side. You can see here I've just got to the cluster, no yarn over to drop off. But again, I'm going to slip each stitch in that cluster, purlwise, and knit the center stitch, keeping it nice and tight. Slip the cluster stitches, knit the next stitch, again, kind of pulling the yarn tight, and then knit to my next motif. Around five of the pattern, you'll need either a cable needle or you can use a you can use a DPN if you don't have a chunkier cable needle. It definitely doesn't need to be nearly as big as your working needles. It's just something to hold the stitches. And we're going to do a sort of weird combination of a cable and a decrease. You, if you are comfortable cabling without a cable needle, you can definitely do these without a cable needle. Uh, it gets a little tight and awkward though, so I did find it easier with the cable needle. So again, I'm going to knit until I get to my motif. This time, rather than knitting all the way up to my little cluster of three stitches, I'm going to stop where I've got three stitches before that cluster. So one, two, three, and then the cluster. And what we're going to do, what our goal here really, is to cross these cluster stitches over these three knit stitches towards the front, and decrease the cluster stitches into one stitch. If they started out as one stitch, they're going to go back to one stitch. So what I'm going to do is slip my first three knit stitches to the cable needle. And that's just going to go and hang out at the back of the work. And then I'm going to knit the three cluster stitches together. This is just like a knit two together, except you're going through three. And do take a sec to double check that you have got all three loops on the needle. It's really easy to drop the middle yarn over at this point, and if you drop the middle yarn over, you end up with just one really big stitch. That sort of middle yarn over is what anchors it into three stitches rather than one big loop. So knit those together. I like to pull the yarn tight again here because we don't want the stitches in between getting really loose. And then I've still got my three knit stitches on the cable needle, so I'm going to knit those three. for a minute. And now I'm at my center stitch. On this round and all of the rounds where you're kind of closing up these cluster stitches, your working cables, you're decreasing, you're going to slip that center stitch. This time I'm at my little cluster of stitches first, 
So those are going to go on the cable needle. Again, making sure you definitely get all three loops. And then those are going to hang out at the front of the work. This cable needle is a little bit small and slippery, but it's quite nice. It's got this little bend in the middle that kind of helps the stitches not slide off. And then you're going to knit three. Bring those stitches on the cable needle kind of back up and then knit all three of them together. Set that aside, we won't need it for a few rounds. And here we've got our first set of branches completed. And you can really see how those look like big, big knit stitches, kind of crisscrossing the surface of the work. Knit to your next motif. On our next round, we're going to set up our next tier of branches. Do that in exactly the same way. Well, not exactly. We're going to do that in the same way, except these stitches, these branches aren't going to be quite so big, so we don't want to add quite as much extra yarn, which means I'm only going to work a yarn over after working my one stitch into three little cluster rather than a yarn over on either side. So I'm now one stitch before my center stitch. You're always working these clusters next to the center stitch. So I'm gonna knit into that, stretch it a little bit up, yarn over, knit into it, and then I'm gonna do a yarn over afterwards as well. Then knit the center stitch. And because we're dropping that extra yarn over off, we don't really need symmetry, so it's just easier to do the same thing on each side. So knit into the stitch, yarn over, knit into the same stitch, and then our little extra yarn over can go afterwards as well. And then knit to the next motif. This round, I'm going to knit to those cluster stitches, slip them purlwise with yarn in back, and then drop the extra yarn overs off the needle. And again, I'm knitting the center stitch. So you're knitting the center stitch except on rows where you're or rounds where you're closing up your clusters, you're cabling them. Slip the yarn over. The process for completing these slightly smaller branches is pretty much the same as the bigger ones. We're just going to be cabling over fewer knit stitches. So in this case, I'm going to knit until I have two knit stitches before my cluster. I'm going to slip them to the cable needle, hold them at the back. Knit the three cluster stitches together. And then knit both stitches for my cable needle. I like to kind of keep hold of my cable needle if I can while I'm knitting the cluster stitches together, just so it doesn't kind of flip around or the stitches don't fall off, especially with this kind of smaller slippery cable needle. Then slip the center stitch. We're slipping it because we're on that cable round. Then slip the three cluster stitches to the cable needle. They go to the front of the work. Knit two. Knit three together from the cable needle. and then knit to the end, or knit to the next motif. Our third tier of branches is gonna be worked in the same way as the first two, but we're going down a yarn over. We're not gonna do any compensating, we're not gonna do any extra yarn overs on either side. And then for the cabling, we're just crossing over one stitch. So that should be pretty straightforward, having worked these two. So I'm not going to demonstrate, I'm just gonna come back when I'm ready to do the very top of my little tree, this section here. Hi, clearly I'm making zero attempt at continuity here. I shot all of this yesterday and I thought I had everything, went to edit it today and the last clip was missing. So I'm just gonna reshoot it now 
I don't have my fun Christmas jumper, so I'm not wearing it. Um, but I wanted to show you how to do the very top of the trees, which is a stitch more like a dip stitch. It's actually a variation on a Japanese bubble technique, and it makes a stitch really similar to these kind of big raised ones that we used for the branches, but that is just a single stitch that goes straight up. So there was no cable involved. And I'm, I've knit to the center stitch. Between the last cable row or round and this round, I've done one just plain knit round, knit every stitch. So this round, I'm going to knit to the center stitch. I'm here now. And then I'm not going to knit into that stitch. I'm going to knit into the stitch immediately below it. So there's the stitch on the needle. I'm going to knit into this stitch here just by inserting my right needle tip from front to back all the way through, wrapping the yarn. And I'm not going to slide it off. I'm going to leave this stitch on my left needle. I've now got a new stitch on my right needle. I want that to be nice and loose. So I'm going to pull my needles apart a bit, make a yarn over. This should now be familiar. Go into the same stitch, knit, and we're going to repeat that once more. So yarn over, and then knit. And just to double check, you should have five loops now on your right needle, all coming out of that one stitch. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're still not going to knit this stitch, we're going to drop it off. Normally when you drop a stitch, it's a reason to panic, but in this case, because we've got these loops through the stitch below, it's going to trap this piece of yarn and it's just going to hang out behind. And there we go, nothing unraveled. And then knit to the next motif. I'm just going to knit to the end of my swatch, of course. The following round is very similar to what we did on the tree branches. We're going to just knit and then slip those stitches in that little five stitch cluster. So I'm knitting up to that cluster. And then when I get to it, I'm going to slip those. And it's definitely easier to do this one loop at a time. Make sure you get all of them. Three, four, five. And then knit the next stitch. Just as we did earlier, I'm pulling the yarn nice and tight to kind of pull those two knit stitches together. So they're almost touching behind all of those slipped stitches in the cluster. That just helps to keep things kind of even around these cluster stitches. It probably won't be perfectly even, that's fine, but it's nice not to have any really loose areas next to them. And now on this round, we're going to close the cluster stitch. You guessed it, by knitting five together, because we want that to stick straight up, we're not doing any cabling. So it is just going to be knit five together. So knit to the cluster and then knit all five loops together. It's gonna to be a bit tricky to get your needle in. I find it easiest if I bring my right needle tip almost parallel to my left, and then I can also use my fingers to kind of pull down on the bottom and really open that up and make sure I can get my right needle all the way through and all through all five loops there. That looks okay, I think. Here we go. And then it's knit to the next motif, and after completing this round, your trees will be done. And then it's just a case of working the crown shaping. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without the pom-pom. My favorite way to deal with pom-poms is to use leave some long tails when I tie my pom-pom together. In this case, I also used a slightly sturdier yarn than this single ply and a thinner yarn. And then I like to just thread those ends through the top of my hat with a darning needle and tie a bow on the inside so that I can take the pom-pom off if I want to wash it, or maybe I don't feel like wearing a pom-pom, or you could have fun and make different colored pom-poms, or maybe use those fake fur pom-poms and switch things out. So that can be fun. And that was how to knit the Licht hat. I hope you have fun with this free pattern. And if you're watching this in real time, I hope you have a lovely festive season and happy new year. 
I will see you again in 2024. We have lots of new tutorials and patterns coming up. So make sure you do subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of those. You can subscribe to YouTube, of course. We also have a newsletter, which is the best way to like not let the algorithms decide what you see and make sure you get updates on new patterns, new videos, and we do have exclusive discounts for our newsletter subscribers. So if you're not already signed up, I will put the link down below and you can do that. And of course, you can also find the download links for the pattern in the notes down below. Until next year, happy knitting, happy new year, goodbye.